Hello and welcome back to Mouth T UK. Now you will have seen this setup that I'm currently in right now before because this is part of a weekend that I'm already doing with a friend of mine called Paul. Now I've been asked quite a few times about the cowboy coffee that I've made in, in previous videos so I decided to make um, a separate video a short video on how to make cowboy coffee now I guess really we should be calling it Carpus coffee welcome to Mafti UK right so I have a guinea pig with me today and it's Paul who's gonna actually try my coffee now are you a coffee fan Paul strong coffee yeah. strong coffee good because this is wet yeah. yeah well this is definitely definitely gonna hit all those marks so Paul's going to be our experimental guinea pig to see if I'm actually telling lies when I say it's great. And now uh, let's see if we can uh, impress Paul with how simple it is to make a coffee. Now the trick with cowboy coffee is that you, uh, oh I might just start calling it carpus coffee. The trick with carpus coffee is that you don't really need a lot of equipment, you don't need a lot of tools. All you need is a burner, a cup, some water and your coffee. Now whatever coffee you choose to use is entirely up to you. It makes no difference what coffee you use as long as that it's pre-ground. So it, you don't want beans unless you've got some form of um, grinding your beans yourself. But as long as it's pre-ground coffee in those bags or in a container and it's fresh, that's all you really need. And I will show you how to make an absolutely fantastic coffee on the bank with just those simple ingredients. And you don't need a thousand pound barista machine to get this style of coffee and well Paul will be honest and if he doesn't like it he'll say he doesn't like it. Soon find out. Well we will find out won't we. So so let's get the equipment out, let's get it going let's, and I'll show you exactly how we make Carpus coffee. So there's there's a couple of things that you need to know when you do your cowboy coffee and firstly that is that however you cook it if you use gas i.e. in that form, gas burner, or with the Trangier, as you can see here, makes no difference how you do it. The, the, the principles are the same. But one of the most important things is, is that you must place your coffee on a steady surface first. So you put your cup with your water in on a steady surface first. You have to do it that way because if you do it any other way, if you do this any other way, what happens is all the grits from this bag will all end up stuck around the outside of the cup and not inside the cup. So what we need to do now is get our coffee and obviously we're using our Costa coffee. We'll get that open. One. Two. What the hell. There you go. Three. You see how it's not stuck to any sides? That's how you want it. What you simply do now is put the lid on and wait. The wind is just a little strong for that height, so I'm just going to put my windbreak up. One of the important things to remember when you're doing your coffee is that once it starts, leave it alone. Don't mess with it. And we've just had that conversation with Paul there. You'd be tempted to pick your spoon up and take the lid off and give it a stir. Don't do that because you don't want the coffee sticking to the sides. Just let it sit as it is. What you're waiting for is that to start boiling. And when that coffee starts to boil, you're just one minute away from the perfect coffee. So we sit here patiently. smelling that gorgeous Smell coffee it. and again when it starts to boil the bitterness in the coffee will boil off and you will smell it it goes from this really sweet smell that we've got now to a real bitter smell and you will you, downwind you will definitely yeah. smell it and that's all the bitterness going and when you actually get to drink this it's not bitter at all it's, it's absolutely you don't need sugar you don't need milk you don't need anything with it it's just fantastic I'm really, really pumping this up now. I'm <laughs> I hope it tastes as good as I make out. It should do. It should do. Let's hope so. 
because um, I'm going to get caught a complete and utter bull. <laughs> this doesn't work. But we are waiting now for the boil. It's got to boil. You've got to keep your eye on it. When it does start to boil, it will rise, it will flare, and I'll hopefully we'll get a shot of that, because when we get near it, the, the water will rise, the coffee will flare up, it will rise about two or three inches, which is why we don't put any more than two thirds of a cup in. If you put more than that in, what happens is it will flare over the top, and you'll just lose all your grits and make a mess everywhere. So that's why it's only just over half, between half and two thirds full. definitely start to smell it. Yeah. When, it's, when it boils, you will smell the bitterness. Mm. You'll, you, you're, uh, the smell will change completely. And you're, they always say you mustn't boil coffee because it destroys it. I totally disagree Obviously, with that. I disagree with that. It's like, I'm one of them, I'd rather put, I'd rather put the boiling water and everything into coffee before put milk. Yeah. They always have to, a lot of people say you'll burn the coffee. Yeah. It was just exactly what we're doing. Exactly. Burning the coffee. Yeah. yeah. Now any minute now this is going to flare up. Here we go. smell that, that might smell a bit different now, it, might, it won't smell as sweet. Now you're going to boil that now for 45 to a minute, so 45 seconds to a minute. So there we are, we've been boiling this now for 45 seconds to a minute, there's no science to that, just don't boil it too long, that's for the handle only. to do now is that we have to separate the grits so all the bits of stuff that's inside that coffee all the grits and little bits and pieces are all combined together they're all congealed and swirling around together we want it we want to separate them we want to get those grits to the bottom and there's a various different ways of doing it you can watch many bushcraft shows and you'll get some that just give the side of the tin some taps and if you remember the old cowboy movies when they used to call people for a brew tapping the side of the jar there you go that's where that comes from when they're tapping the side of the jar separating the grits from the coffee is when they would know the coffee was ready to drink however because that's really hot there's also a second method that you can use to separate the grits and that is just by adding a simple splash of cold water it also means that you can drink it pretty much straight away too so all I'll do there hold on to the cup make sure I don't tip it a little splash of cold water what that does is grab the coffee molecules and then takes it to the bottom of the cup. Now it won't filter it completely, it will have some coffee left in it, it will be grits left in it but it will all be at the bottom of your cup, you won't actually drink it. So I'm now going to pour you some <laughs> and you can tell me whether or not I was talking out of my... There you go. Cheers. Cowboy coffee or in fact Carpus coffee. What do you think? Is it? Not bitter whatsoever. Do you like it? Yeah. yeah. Definitely like it. There you go. See? Oh, quite easily say, actually, no, Matt, come to think of it, 
That is absolutely disgusting. Oh, I don't nice. like it. It's a nice, strong coffee. It, it's yeah. smoky. Yeah. It's definitely nice. Yeah. Good. So there we go. That wasn't from me, was it? That was Paul saying that, yeah, that's a successful coffee. And it took little or no effort whatsoever. And why don't you give it a go? Give it a try. Get some coffee from your cupboard. Make sure it's fresh. And at least give it a go. And uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, oh well. Never mind. You know that's missing? A bourbon. A bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> and I can do something about that as well. Yeah, yeah warm bourbon smell, man. Devil's cut today. Devil's cut. Carpus coffee. That's different. <laughs> so there you go. That was a separate short video for the Carpus coffee. I hope you enjoyed that. I like say it was only a short little video. But I, asked, I've, I have been asked a lot of questions about it, so I hope that um, satisfies your curiosity and get out there and make some. In fact, give it a go now on, in the kitchen. If you don't believe me, give it a go. See you later. Bye bye. Right. Well, actually, we've just had a bit of uh, we've just had a couple of squigs of that coffee since I've added the bourbon to it. What do you think since we've added the bourbon, Paul? The bourbon spoils the coffee. You can't taste the coffee anywhere near as much as it. So you think that by adding the bourbon, we've actually made it worse? Yeah, definitely, 100%. Right, there you go. I had to be honest, it's still, got to be honest. Still drinkable, Yeah. but I definitely prefer it without prefer it. prefer it without the bourbon? Yeah, definitely. There's a first. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Well, who would have thought adding bourbon to coffee ruined it? That is a first, because I don't think I've ever actually added bourbon to a uh, coffee, a, a normal coffee with milk and sugar. Yes, I have, but I don't think I've actually added one to that. So that's quite, a, that's quite an interesting. Oh, there we go. We got a bleep too. So that's that's quite an interesting turnout. Thanks, Paul. Hey, boy! You know what you are. Just a 